Hello, everybody. Yes. Thanks for coming <laughs> at this uh, lunchtime. Yeah. The reason why we are talking today is um, the completion and inauguration of the of a project last Sunday, um, which um, Tobias was working on for almost three years. Four. four. Almost four. Four. Um, the title is 24 Stops, and um, my question is, what is 24 Stops? Um, do we have any images? <laughs> um, it's, a, it's basically <coughs> a project which is a kind of a um, guiding system between two museums, uh, between the Fondation Baile and the Vitra Museum, and the project was started by the museum, basically by inviting me to think about a possible guiding system. And my idea finally was that I created 24 sculptures along the way that make you basically, without any kind of signage or something, uh, make you find the way between the two museums, which are about five kilometers away from each other. Um, mentally a bit more because it's on two sides of the border uh, and uh, most people didn't even know how close these two museums are or didn't realize and I think that was the basic idea of uh, Sam Keller and uh, Rolf Fehlbaum, the two heads of the institutions to um, start this project. Also we should add there are two other partners who yeah. were very important, which... Of course, the, uh, the two, you mean the two municipalities? Or, yeah, the community uh, yeah. of... The community of Rien and the community of Weil. I mean, they didn't start the project and they were partners and they helped us, of course. And we very much needed them to realize the project, but uh, it started out with the two museums, then the two communities came in. Then, of course, somebody came in who had to kind of help us realizing it financially, which was Swatch, and um, yeah. But this mixture of the four partners, two institutions and two communities, that was very important because there were always these four um, in the dialogue. So, not for you it was probably important. No, of course <laughs> it was important because, uh, you know, alone alone the different regulation between the German building system and the Swiss building system and all that, we would have not been able to do it without them. But what I was just saying was kind of the initiative came from the two museums. So let's first have a look at these, um, what you did. Yeah. Um, um, as I said, it's 24 sculptures along the way and maybe we just like relatively quickly flip, slip through them um, this is the object that is like really in front of the house door of the Vitra campus, uh, which is a clock, uh, not a clock, uh, a bell, sorry. A bell. <laughs> Clocke, a clock, no, it's a bell uh, um, that was made by actually a very old bell making family in Austria. And, and uh, the same or kind of similar object is on the other side at the, at the Bayerle Foundation, um, which I, where I thought uh, is kind of nice, you know, like almost like a, a, a starting, how do you call it, when you shoot with a pistol, like in a, in a run or something. Yeah. There's a starting sure. sound uh, that you kind of ring the bell when you start and you ring the bell when you arrive. And uh, that was the first object. And then there's... That's on the other side, actually. That's uh, now the second object on the uh, um, Fondasio Baile side, which is these bird cages um, in, the, in the courtyard. And this is a kind of a water... Spout. Again, uh, spout. Yeah. Okay, water spout. Again, I don't know the... English word for it. And the thing is really that you have to imagine it a little bit like that. This is a, 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 a kind of a, not a beehive, but a, 
um, an object where insects could basically kind of take home, so, so to say. Um, yeah, another one. It's like a, a birdhouse, but for insects. This is actually a birdhouse. Two more, three more birdhouses. <laughs> this is a cuckoo clock, has a very particular kind of function. First of all, it, it kind of turns, and then every hour, uh, the two hands come together like a beacon, and then it goes cuckoo. It's, it's actually a bit hard to understand if you don't see how it actually moves. Um, it's another cuckoo clock where you cannot read the time re really, but uh, every hour or every quarter of an hour the, this yellow spot opens and then this kind of cylindric object comes out and cuckoos. Kind of a floor piece on, a, on asphalt. Uh, wall painting on a private garage along the way. Um, street light. Binoculars to like look down into the Rhine Valley. A tree. Um, bins. Uh, how do you call that in English? Do you know? I perch. Oh, high high perch. Okay. Yeah. In More birdhouses. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that hasn't been all the objects, but uh, uh, some of them. And the function uh, of the objects itself uh, <clears throat> in the context of the of the finding the way it's all it's done so that wherever you could make a decision to go left or right or change the change the direction you would see one of these objects in the direction uh, you would have to you would have to walk and that's true from both sides so whether you go from uh, the violet to the vitra, or from the vitra to the violet, functions uh, in the same way. And um, it turned out, and that's purely technical. It turned out uh, that we that 24 objects were needed in order to find your way um, in both directions. And it was already um, a year ago that half 12 of these um, way markers have been installed. And there was a big inauguration for the public, for the people living there, for Basel people, Rien people, Weil people. And that was a very important start. So it didn't start last Sunday and suddenly all these 24 objects were there, but it started slowly and... Um, kind of filled up, you yeah. could say. Yeah. And... Um, it's a, it's a, the function you say they are way markers, they guide, they guide the way, but um, they have also different roles, each of them and all together. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like all, almost all, always in my work, um, it uh, played a lot with the idea, or, or it's almost in that case, it's almost kind of a laboratory of kind of different levels of functionality and different levels of abstraction and different levels of how easy it is to project your own idea of the object onto it. Um, I mean, there's objects where, I mean, some that we don't have an image yet uh, of, for example, there's a, a fountain on the way, which is clearly, you know, there to like drink water or or objects like uh, the clock or the binoculars, who, well, the function is pretty easy to find out or pretty obvious, uh, even though, like, for example, for the binoculars, you really have to get close in order to understand it. Then there is objects, another one that we don't have now um, is this uh, um, uh, Wetterhäuschen. It's like a 
do you say barometer? <laughs> like a, yeah, like a, it's an object that kind of forecasts the weather, but uh, if you just see it and you don't know what, what it, it actually is. is, it looks pretty much like yeah, kind of an abstract uh, object. And uh, only by observing what it does or by knowing and finding out through other media, like, I don't know, books or, or somebody tells you, you would not see it from the object itself. While other objects, like for example, the tree, is like not, not useful at all other than, um, other than it, it is uh, uh, useful as a way marker, but uh, it's standing in the middle of all these fruit trees, which is kind of you know, nature, but functional nature. And uh, so I was trying in a way through all the objects um, uh, that they all have kind of different levels or different kinds of functionalities or different levels of, of that you're able or immediately able to understand what you can do with them. Why, um, why, why are you so good in working in public space or, or what attracts you in public space or why do you feel at ease in public space because it's, um, well, it's something very different. Uh, the object is not the center of attention. Um, hard to say. Um, I think what I like about it, uh, and that probably makes it easier to work like that, if you really like it, what I like is that you have all these kind of different contexts, circumstances, different necessities, different... Uh, yeah, different ways of approaching, and uh, I think, you know, what you just said, that is not necessarily the center of the object, is something that I'm interested in, because a lot of times I'm a bit frustrated, especially when, it's, when it comes to contemporary art, I'm a bit frustrated to always have this or having to have this kind of confrontational, almost one-dimensional relation to work. Like, you know, in a gallery or in a museum, you go there, you stand in front of it, you stare at it, it kind of stares back or not, and, uh, and that's it, you know? Like, and uh, I always have this kind of desire or urge that art should be more something that should be with you, around you, and not necessarily always. You know, it's different with like historic work than, than it's somehow for me more understandable or more. Um, but but with uh, work that should be kind of now and today and have a lot to do with you, I always feel that, you know, also kind of the, as the concept of a museum. You know, I, I wish it would be more place, more of a place to, to hang out or to, you know, not like a like a more like a public square or something, and not so much this kind of as I said confrontational situation. And I think that's something which in public space is much easier to achieve. Also, um, again, I don't exactly know the English word for it. Kind of a Beiläufigkeit, you know. The, uh, <laughs> That it just like yeah, comes yeah. along, you know, Easy, and it's not. Or? Yeah, like uh, you know that it's as you quite well framed it, you know, like not necessarily always the center of uh, uh, the center of uh, of uh, of attraction, yeah. It's which probably sorry, but which probably has to do with the idea that it should be kind of. You know, my dream is always kind of the art as the everyday object, you know, like, yeah, yeah. But, but that's as true for, for a painting or for an abstract sculpture too. But that is, I, I think that stands behind this, that I like to work in public art, uh, in public uh, spaces. So in a way, the, the focus, you are shifting the focus from, from the 
ob from the autonomous object to the interaction and with the context, with the but I don't think you know, yeah, but I don't think you know I don't think there is anything like an autonomous object, you know, like <laughs> also like the whatever Tony Smith in the park or the Calder in the museum, you know, I think it's never an autonomous object, you know because the 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 contexts and the and the relations it has and the you know it's not something that just floats somewhere in the air and uh, I mean, funny to say that with a calder, but, but, uh, but I think, yeah, I think there's nothing like an autonomous object, and even abstract objects are not autonomous, really. And uh, just because a museum is a white cube doesn't mean it's neutral in yeah. any kind of sense, no, you know? Never. So, never. yeah, and, uh, yeah. And, uh, and I like that, uh, that idea that... that Art, of course, can be, or, or also has to be, you know, you have to look at it, you have to maybe touch it, you have to, like, do things with it, mentally, but maybe also physically. Um, and, uh, yeah, and that's, that's kind of what I'm, I think, what I'm aiming for, or at least what I want to try to find out how to develop other relationships with objects than just visual ones. Did you um, you have a you the language of of your work is very um, um, distinct and specific. It's um, from the beginning on um, the color, the form, and um, can you say something in respect to this um, idea? Um, I'm I think uh, you know and. Uh a lot of times that's more used as a kind of, uh, how do you say that? No, it's more that, uh, I mean, there's a specific language in this project, um, which is not necessarily always the, the language no. that I'm using for other things. And to a certain extent, I mean, I know that a lot of people say, a lot, my, my, a lot of times my work deals with like, kind of bright colors and, and, and all that, but um, in the end it's more that I almost think that it's not necessarily that I have a kind of personal language that is always visual, you know, because there's a lot of things where you might think, oh, it's two different kinds of artists, but it's both my work. Um, in that case, of course, uh, it had to follow one language uh, throughout the whole uh, way because it is about like recognizing and it is about uh, 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 finding the objects that why that's also why they kind of like for objects a lot of them are kind of in nature even though man-made nature but nature or in kind of like planty kind of uh, a context and uh, and that's why I think I choose <coughs> choose these forms and the, uh, which are kind of geometric and more minimal, kind of anti-nature form almost, or, or kind of opposite. Um, uh, and also color-wise, because of course it's always about, you know, like you have to see this object, even if it's like sometimes a couple of hundred meters away. And uh, so it has to kind of stick out almost a little bit, kind of being a little bit alien to its context. and. Uh, and I think that's why I have chosen that kind of formal language. I remember we had this discussion when you were one, from the beginning on, one of the way markers was the tree. Um, and um, yeah. it was in a different, in a, on a different spot of the whole way. And um, we had, only with this object, huge, big discussions with um, Naturschutzverbände, mm -hmm. what? Yeah. Um, protection, uh, nature uh, protecting, yeah. Na nature protectors. Um, <laughs> and it, but it turned, um, it became clear. We had then a, a good discussion with um, representatives of them, and um, it turned out it wasn't. Um, 
a danger to nature because it couldn't be, but it was a visual danger in, in their perspective, which was in a way understandable because um, they, they first they couldn't understand why this um, signal of a tree um, could be part of this wonderful nature. Yeah, I think, you know, the, um, the, the, the problem was a bit that they, they, uh, they felt a little bit uh, as, as if we were to make jokes about them, or, you know, and uh, because, uh, yeah, as you say, they didn't understand that while there was all these trees standing around, while we would have to place a kind of a, almost like caricature of a of a tree um, I think also partly because in a ways at least from my understanding that they you know like th th there's this kind of they have this kind of clear idea about what nature is even though like nothing on that uh, uh, whole path uh, is kind of untouched nature you know it's like all i mean there is like living objects you could say growing trees or or or, or vineyards or but uh, but uh, uh, nothing is not man made but the, so but the great thing was and, and i think that's also one of the um, um, su successes of such a kind of working was that during this discussion and after this discussion um, they agreed that the tree we had to move it somewhere else but they understood the idea and they are not happy about the, the, the whole project of the 24 stops so I think that's a, a, a great sign for no of course and uh, you know like if, I mean as I said you know in the beginning they might have thought we want to make fun of them but then, I mean, that's my experience. And, uh, you know, with public art, that always happens, that you have to convince people. And there's a lot of people who, who have uh, uh, arguments. And, uh, and uh, 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 But usually these discussions kind of, um, if, you, if you explain and if, you, if, if people understand, it's not just a joke. It's something that's, like, pretty serious and, like, and 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 that th that one has thought about it a lot, and uh, and that you also that you uh, kind of take their doubts kind of serious in a way. I mean, that's kind of an experience I have. That most or almost always you can achieve a certain kind of agreement, uh, and uh, and even people, you know, that has been a little bit against what you're trying to do in the end are sometimes the biggest fans. So there came one more stop. Yeah, that's kind of temporarily. Um, something that is not necessarily functional in the kind of wayfinding, but um, uh, a kind of a 25th uh, temporary object uh, that we made uh, exactly on the borderline between Germany and Switzerland and uh, that had once to do with the kind of um, how we thought about that's a bit complicated there was a kind of a side project that came out of the the whole 24 stop project which was of course uh, uh, together with the uh, 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 the main partner for this project, Swatch, that they asked me to do a watch for them. And, uh, and we wanted to have so kind of on the, on the way a kind of spot where you could purchase that watch and where, you could, where it could be given out. But then we thought about what is the best spot for that and uh, what the whole project is about. And then um, we decided to do a 25th object on, on the border which um, is a bit kind of symbolic, uh, I would say, other than most of the other uh, uh, pieces along the way, which 
that this is kind of this uh, um, pile of abstracted uh, graphic uh, 3D pile of wood, which uh, is a kind of a, like has the kind of a look of a barricade or of a blockade of something, and that we kind of put it on the on, on the on the borderline, and then kind of the direction of it is not uh, is a, like cross the actual borderline. So it's not it's kind of the opposite of a of a barricade is not blocking something, but it's kind of way marker again. Uh, a way marker <laughs> where you yeah, but it's kind of inviting you to kind of pass by and not like blocking it. And that was kind of some of the you know like some of the the main issues of the whole project, like crossing border, going in between two uh, uh, two cities, going in between. Uh, uh, to uh, countries and uh, so that is a kind of almost like the the symbol for the whole project in a way. Yeah, it was this was from the beginning on one of the big attractions that um, this way crosses the border in a very natural way and as you know Basel is so close to France and Germany that um, people living here walk between the countries without thinking about it. And um, so um, suddenly, in the la especially in the last few well, year or so, um, it, it, uh, the idea of this border became in a, in a new way very relevant and um, it, this was not from the beginning on the purpose to, we didn't have this in mind, but now it suddenly becomes um, so clear that you said it once also, that um, it's also something we have in mind, this crossing or not crossing. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, especially on that spot, you know, like, I mean, when we were discussing with the authorities about the spot, if we could use it or not, you know, like it was kind of suddenly um, not so clear anymore because they said, you know, we don't know what happens with the whole refugee uh, uh, situation and, uh, and uh, we don't know if we're going to close this border again. Or, um, luckily, it didn't happen, but, but then also like, not even a hundred years ago, you know, was one of the most, like during the Second World War, was one of the most protected borders, and uh, it was not easy at all to cross it. So, um, it it is kind of a very, and in a way, we you know, like as symbolic as we have used this this spot uh, now, um, you know, like it it became that again, you know, not not the, uh, and it wasn't from the very beginning four years ago that we were aware of how symbolic uh, it would become again. Um, but yeah, now it is what it is. And, uh, and I think, um, you know, like, uh, it's a good example of, you know, what I think what we probably all want and what we all agree on how uh, something like that should work. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy that uh, Somehow, almost like uh, you know, as if we would have known, but um, mm. that uh, it turned out like that, and uh, that it is a kind of symbol for like how borders could be used, namely to cross them. I, I would like to come back briefly to um, what we were talking about that you um, are not interested or that you even think it's it's not possible to the concept of the autonomous um, artwork but i think it's more in in your work it's really not your concept it's not your interest and this is not only um in in public space 
in your work in public space, but also when you are working, um, looking at works in galleries, in museums. And um, for example, a very early work were, were the portraits with vases, etc. But what, what interests me, how, why, why is that? How came it that you, that you were so sure that it is um, a good way to <laughs> shift the focus from the object to the in-between relations? Um. Does it have to do with teacher? Is there a Frankfurt school? Was it the late 80s, early 90s? I don't know really. I mean, probably, uh, <laughs> as always, a bit of all of that. But um, I don't know. I mean, as I said before, you know, like this kind of... I mean, I have this uh, example that I use um, always uh, of how, like from very early time on, you know, when I was a child, I always uh, wanted to have a Van Gogh painting but uh, not to hang it on the wall, but my dream was always kind of to sleep on it, you know, like to like <laughs> have it almost like a cushion or something. And that was really, I don't know where I had that from. It was really something, I mean, of course we couldn't afford a Van Gogh painting, um, but, uh, but I always dreamt about that. I always had the feeling that would give me something that I couldn't get just from looking at it. And uh, and that somehow I don't know kept uh, stayed with me, or uh, and I can really not say where it's actually coming from. It's just like that's my idea of art that it's not just something to look at. And even when the work as the Van Gogh painting, um, I'm almost certain that Van Gogh's concept of the painting was not <laughs> that I should sleep on it, you know. But uh, <laughs> but. Um, Still, you know, I think there's so much about art that uh, can be used also in a different way. Or if I, th if I would think, for example, and I could just say any name, but let's say a, an Andy Warhol painting would now hang in the back of mine. You know, like, I'm sure, and I don't mean it in an esoteric way, I mean it really, you know, more in a kind of, of course I would be aware of it, of course I would like think about it, and even the moments I don't think about it, it would still do something with me, you know? And, or the idea to have it, or to borrow it, or to, you know, all these kinds of how you can be connected to a work, you know? That's something that completely interests me, and, uh, and I don't know exactly how it functions, I just have the feeling it does, and I want to try out all possibilities of how you can, could connect with it. And I have so much the feeling, again, you know, that it's not just, you know, I mean, of course, we used to look at w artwork and we used to think about artwork. Um, that's, some, that's kind of two ways that, that's kind of the common sense that that's what, how art functions. But I really think there's a lot of other, or another example I use, which is, which is even more kind of, uh, at first moment you would say banal, but then for me it's completely not banal. I was one hot uh, summer day in front of the National Gallery in Berlin. There was this Sarah piece, uh, uh, um, like a kind of, I think it was like one meter fifty by one meter, or one meter by one meter steel, cortine steel cube. And I was like just waiting for my friends to come out because I was already done. I have looked at everything. And I was sitting on this sculpture <laughs> and it was this cold steel, you know, and I found it on this hot summer day. I found it so convincing as an argument for that Sarah sculpture um, <laughs> that I think, why is that not a kind of criteria of quality for an artwork, you know? And uh, because at that moment it gave me so much and it like completely convinced me of. Sarah's work, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I think I really want to think about these things and I really want to try to find out more about it and I really want to, you know, it's, it, it, it's a problem, you know, it's a problem as, it's kind of a formulated problem and, uh, and I think uh, 
it's interesting to look at that. It, if, you, if you look at it today and look back, it's, does it change the kind of your interest, for example, how, how people, how your friends, how people you know, how people you don't know respond to it? or how the, the situation in time changes, how you ch are changing. Is it, um, is it, can you describe it? Is it, does I mean, it have in a way, influence? you know, like, somehow it becomes more complicated uh, 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 all the time. Because, uh, you know, like, you find out like more facets and more details about like all these things. And it's not, you know, as I say, it's not about like, kind of producing answers or not even questions, I would say, you know, it's more about producing the problem that enables you to start a question. I see it more like that. And uh, yeah, and like, as always, you know, the more you dive into it, the more problems appear. And, uh, and I love these problems and I, um, yeah. I I think uh, it's kind of endless and it's not, you know, like we had all this discussion about the, like relational art and but I don't feel it has like kind of changed much, you know, like it's more like almost which is partly also understandable because then you have the reaction of the reaction of the reaction and so on and so forth. But uh, but um, at the moment I, 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 I rather have the feeling that's kind of, it's kind of a bit almost reactionary or something, you know, like it, it rather goes back, people want more like the, the object, uh, I mean, it's not that I'm against objects and I, I take care a lot about the, my objects, see. you know, like, yeah. uh, but it's, uh, but I don't know, um, it's probably like in times of like uncertainty, you know, people are happy, you know, even if it's like easy answers <laughs> to go back to certain certainties, um, that uh, uh, yeah, it's easier to deal with. But mm -hmm. that was never my idea about art or even life. Or you know, like I don't think we get we get answers if we if we use the ones we already had. So um, yeah, no, I, I, you know, and it's not like you know. And the, I think the good thing about um, that is shows kind of through my Van Gogh, you know, is not against or pro a certain kind of art making, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, because I think you can include all kinds of uh, uh, possibilities of work. It's more about like how we deal with it and how uh, um, you know how we enable ourselves to go into positions that might be interesting and, and teach us about, teach something about ourselves or, so it's not, you know, like the old discussion that we always had, like, you know, like conceptual or not, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. painting or installation or, it's, it's not about that, it's more about like how we integrate it in our, yeah, I would say daily life, you know, and I think that's, that's also why I li like a lot, you know, like like collections, like people who have who live with the work, and uh, because I think in the end, I mean, not just necessarily privately, but that's that's more the concept, you know, not not looking at the work, but living with the work. I think that would describe pretty much what I what I would like or desire. Or that's very good. Thank you. <laughs> So maybe we stop here? Yeah, or, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe one or two questions, if yeah, exactly. there are any, but... Uh, yeah. Who painted it? Paid. Yeah. Um, um, actually, it's all paid, I mean, you know, there's a lot of work from the museums in it. There's a lot of work from the municipalities in it that uh, is never kind of seen as who paid for it. You know, like, but but the 
all the money that was necessary beside the engagement of these four uh, um, institutions, it's actually paid by the watch company's watch, including that 25th piece, yeah. It was um, interested to say, like, I was interested that you said that it was, like, different to work with the German side and the Swiss side. So the sculpture, is it which side of the border? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, I would also have to ask somebody from the studio who took care of all these kind of technical requirements and stuff. But I just know that... Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Gabi Schirmacher, she's my kind of production person, head of production in the, in the studio, and she was just describing it to me that it was very interesting that, um, you know, in Switzerland, there was, like, everything in the beginning was kind of a, a problem, and then, like, everybody, you know, in, in Switzerland, everybody's allowed to make something which is, a, they call it Eingabe, which is a kind of, you know, that you can say, hello, I think that's not a good idea, I think uh, should, shouldn't be done or should be done differently. So in Switzerland, everything in the beginning was a problem and then problems were solved and then like, it was like really super reliable and then when something is solved, it's solved and then it's done in the proper way. While, she said, in Germany it was kind of the other way around. In the beginning, like, oh, no, no problem, no problem. Um, we do it, we're, you know, we're very unbureaucratic and blah, blah, blah. And then uh, in the end, it all turned out to be a problem. So that was kind of uh, a bit how she described it. And, uh, but in the end, you have to say, you know, like, it happened, it's all there. And uh, um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's made to stay for a while. So uh, in the end, it's... Uh, the result was the same somehow, you know. Oh. Um. Um, you know, as permanent as it gets, you know. Yes. Um. The oh, the, the question was if it's permanent or if it disappears. It yeah. certainly disappears at some point. Yes. Um, uh, but it's meant well, to be watch, permanent. The watch house is not permanent. It's, the, for, yeah. it's for the summer weeks. Yes. And the, the rest is at least, what, 10 years? Something yeah. like that. I mean, something it's kind like of projected like for oh. 10 years at the moment. Uh, whatever happens. Uh, so next year when I come from Belgium with my bike, I can still do yeah, the yeah, route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can do Perfect. it next year with your bike, the year after next year with your bike. <laughs> you can also do it this year with the bike you yeah. borrow from... Yeah. Uh, th there, so uh, there's and a lot of possibilities. And if I may say so, it's a beautiful way as yes. a to, to, to take it. Um, also with the During rain? all seasons. Ah, all seasons. I, yeah, yeah, in all yeah. seasons. Yeah, yeah the no, wine, like, wine vineyards. Yeah, the vineyards, and, the and like it's really beautiful to look down really? into the Rhine Idyllic. Valley. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah. the beautiful panorama. And it's only one hour, you know, like it's 4,962 four meters. Um, if you don't walk too slow, it's easily done in an hour. Okay. Will do, will do. Okay. <laughs> All right then, thanks for skipping your lunch uh, to come here and uh, yeah, see you next time.